Now, your self-concept affects pretty much everything in your life. And when I say everything, I truly mean it. From your work life, to your love life, to your money and finances, to your family. Like, pretty much every experience that you have, it can be tied back to self-concept in some way. Self-concept is also like a big umbrella term for many other sub-categories like self-love, self-worth, that type of thing, but they all boil down to self-concept. And you can see self-concept as the soil, the foundation of all your life experiences. And if you have a low self-concept, in general, you can say that your life experiences are going to be very poor because they are going to reflect back to you experiences that make you feel small and limited. So if you don't know what self-concept is, very quickly I'm going to summarize it in a few words. Basically it is how you see, think and feel about yourself and how you see yourself in relation to other circumstances or other things or other people in your life. What is the position that you are kind of viewing yourself from? Are you seeing yourself as someone that has a lot of power a lot of autonomy over their life or are you seeing yourself as someone who is kind of just going with the flow not really having much control over your life and just really being a product of your environment so to build a self-concept that is first class high-end high quality a self-concept that is like royalty you have to enlarge your own perception of what you are worth what you are valued at That is the first and main step. You have to enlarge your perception of what you are valued, what you are worth. Now let's talk about self-concept in relation to love and SP because I know most of you are probably here because of that. When you think of yourself in relation to your SP or your partner or your love interest, how do you see yourself? How do you perceive yourself? What do you feel about yourself? If you think of yourself as someone that is a blessing, someone that has so much to offer, someone that is truly a gift to that other person, they will reflect that perception of yourself back to you. But if you're seeing yourself as someone that is super ordinary, nothing special, nothing much to offer, you have to earn all of your worth and earn their love, you're someone that doesn't have that innately, then you are going to attract someone that is going to reflect that back to you as well. So you need to start seeing yourself as someone that is just so, so, so valuable. You have so much infinite value and you are irreplaceable. You are unique. You are one of a kind. There is no one else that is going to be like you. You are the first and last person of you. You yourself. You are just so unique, right? And see yourself as someone that is worth like a million bucks you are truly worth more than a million bucks you're worth a billions and billions you are you can't even put a number to how much you are worth and that's how valuable you are you are a literal blessing on this planet you are a gift from god a gift from the universe whatever you want to call it you have to truly believe this and embody this and if you do this people will reflect back to you that high standard that you are viewing yourself from that's essentially how someone is treated like royalty you know things like princess treatment or king treatment if there's such thing as that i don't know but when you are treated like royalty in a relationship it is because you see your own value you hold yourself to high standards and you see your own worth you materialize your own worth by recognizing it and adding to it and focusing on how great you are how powerful you are and if you think you are someone that is nothing special you know very average you don't really see the value in yourself you don't think you stand out or you attach the value and your worth to external things like how you look your age you know if you have kids or not your history your past your achievements the amount of money that you have if you attach your worth and value to external things then you're going to feel like you need to fit a certain criteria in order to feel worthy. And it's going to be a never-ending chase because there's always something higher that you can chase, that you can attain. And you're just always going to be feeling not enough, not good enough, incompetent. So you need to start thinking of yourself right now, just the way you are, you are enough. You are more than enough. You are 
valuable, infinitely valuable and worthy just as you are right now. You are perfect the way that you are right now. You don't have to do something else. You don't have to, you know, get plastic surgery. You don't have to earn more money. You don't have to be a certain way or fit a certain criteria or do this or that. Stop making it so complicated. You just have to start accepting that you right now, as you are, you are perfect. You are more than enough and realize the value that you have in you right now, just the way you are. Your self-concept should not be dependent on external circumstances or external things. Like you could be homeless, you could be getting bullied, and you could make the choice to start feeling like royalty. You could start seeing yourself as someone that has so much power, that is so great, so much value in them. And you know what, if you truly were homeless and we were getting bullied, but you made that choice to feel that way internally, you would start seeing your reality shift very, very quickly. And this concept applies to money as well, because I know a lot of you who are not trying to manifest an SP want money. And if you are wanting to manifest a large sum of money, do you, how do you see yourself in relation to that sum of money? Do you see yourself as someone that is worthy of having that sum of money? Do you see that money as something that is more powerful, more important than you yourself? How would you view yourself when you think of money, when you think of a large sum of money? Do you want to have money because you want to feel worthy? You want others to see you a certain way? But remember, it's the other way around. You have to feel worthy. You have to feel important first and then that money will come to you. You have to see and enlarge the value in you first in whatever area of your life that you are trying to improve, you have to enlarge your own value. See the value in yourself. Focus on your own value. And when you do that, an SP is not going to seem like anything special. A million dollars is not going to seem like anything special because you are so focused on your own value that everything around you just is kind of like, yeah, this is great, but I know who I am and nothing can take away from my own value. Nothing can add to my own value except for me. So enlarge your own perception of who you are, what you are worth, how important you are. And when you do, energetically, you will feel like you are worth more than any sum of money. And having that mentality is what makes money come to you quicker. Because it's like, okay, she doesn't need me. He doesn't need me anymore. It makes me less resistant to her. And therefore, I'm going to be more in her life. I'm going to be more abundant. I'm going to show up more abundantly in her life. I'm going to manifest as more money in her life. That's what I'm trying to say. (laughs) You have to be someone that money wants to hang around, right? Like if you are not even seeing yourself as anything special, obviously money is not going to want to hang around you. Think of money like a friend, right? If you're always, if you're always If you could talk to money and the dialogue that you were having with money is, why are you never showing up for me? Why are you never there for me? Why are you not enough for me? Obviously, money, if it was a friend, it's not going to want to stay around you. It's not going to want to hang around because you're in this such, you're in such a lack vibe. You're in such a lack energy and they don't want to hang around that. They want to hang around someone that feels abundant, feels worthy, feels powerful and important. That's what they hang that, that's what that's the type of person that money would want to hang around if we were to personify money. I also want to point out something that I think is important to talk about. Having a first class self-concept does not mean that you are looking down on other people. It does not mean that you think you are better than everyone else and everyone else is just a piece of dirt, right? That's not what it means. Being arrogant and having a first class self-concept are two very different things that I think people can get mixed up on. The same as saying confidence and arrogance are not the same thing. There's a very subtle line between them. So what it boils down to is recognizing that you have your own special, unique set of strengths and weaknesses that is unique and different to everyone else. You are born with a special set of gifts that nobody else has. And it's about recognizing those gifts within you, recognizing your own value, focusing on your own value and enlarging yourself to fit your standard that you want to hold yourself to. You are so unique. There is only one of you. You are the first and last to be you and no one else can be you. So you are so focused on your uniqueness. You are so focused on your uniqueness. You are so focused on the fact that you are just so special. 
so irreplaceable, there's no one else like you, there can only be one of you and you're focused on that and because of that, because you understand that, you see your own value, you recognize that this is what makes you so valuable and so special. So recognize that there is a thin line between being focused on your own greatness, your own power and elevating yourself to fit the standard that you want to hold yourself to versus thinking that you are better than everyone else. There's a thin line. You are the first and last person to go through the set of experiences that you've gone through in your life and no one else will be able to have those same thoughts, those same beliefs, those same experiences as you. And that's what makes you so special and unique and you need to focus on your own value around of that. To have a first class self-concept, you also need to have a lot of faith, a lot of trust in yourself and what is going around you. I want you to think of it like this. Imagine a king or a queen and they're sitting on their throne and their servant or whatever comes up to them and informs them of something that's gone wrong. Is the king or queen going to start panicking and being like, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? And they start getting on their hands, doing all the dirty work, fixing the problem themselves. They probably won't do that, right? Like generally when I think of a king or queen, They're relaxed and sitting on their throne, trusting that things are going to work out for them, even if something undesirable appears in their reality. They're not going to fixate on the undesirable. They're fixated on their life that is already perfect and they're just relaxing and enjoying, trusting that everything is going to work out in the end, even if they can't figure it out in the moment. Kings and queens do not trade or abandon that powerful state of mind that things always work out for them just because they see something that they don't like in the in their 3D. So you need to hold that same type of energy for yourself. You need to almost, not egoically, but men- energetically, imagine that you're like a king or queen in your own reality, sitting on the throne, and if something pops up that you don't really like, you're not going to stress and fixate on it and use all your precious precious energy trying to fix that thing that just popped up. You're going to sit back, relax, focus on what you actually do want and trust that what you want is already done. It's already done. You don't need to stress. All you need to do is relax and sit back, enjoy your life, live your life as you would if you already had the things that you wanted. Because I know most of you will be able to feel like you're on top of the world for a short period of time and then as soon as something undesirable pops up, as soon as you know bad circumstances come your way, you trade that state of mind, you trade that powerful state of mind for one that is desperate and in lack and needing to fix circumstances. And you start stressing and feeling small and limited again and you don't want that. You want to always choose the more powerful state of mind and sit in that. Let it become your dominant state. Let it saturate your inner world. So continue to sit on that mental throne of yours. Relax and just enjoy life as you would, knowing that you are taken care of and everything that you want is already done. The thing that you want, it's already done. You just have to have that trust and focus on that trust. Focus on that faith, that conviction in yourself that it will happen one way or another. You're never chasing anything energetically because as soon as you start chasing, you go into this dynamic of that thing that you are chasing is more powerful than you, more important than you. And that takes away, that strips you from seeing your own value, your own importance. So don't chase, don't go into good blah. Don't go into that energy of chasing and just sit back, relax, and know that you already have everything that you want within you and trust that Hold the trust, hold the faith in yourself that you know it's going to manifest sooner or later. This is precisely how you manifest everything and anything that you want. You decrease the resistance you have around those things that you were chasing and instead you enlarge your own self-concept. You enlarge yourself. You see the power in you and when you do that, You stop seeing other things as being more powerful, more important than you and therefore you decrease the resistance around you receiving them because you don't see them as anything crazy big. You just see them as something as like, yeah, that's part of who I am. That's going to be my life and I don't see that as anything crazy special because I've only, I've already seen the value in me. If you make another person or another circumstances or money 
your god or you idolize them, you idolize money or a specific person, you are always going to be feeling more small, more doubtful than you actually are. And you're not going to be able to feel those feelings of powerful and greatness that you want to be feeling. And I do believe that feeling powerful, feeling great, those are all feelings that will make your life essentially more fulfilling, more more great to live, more happy to live in, more peaceful to live in. I also want you to recognize that as the only person that gets to create their experiences and their reality, you are the only one that can assign meaning to things, to people, to money, to situations. You are the only person that can assign that value to it. And because you hold that power, that arguably makes you the most valuable, the most powerful thing in your reality, that ability to assign meaning to certain things and therefore have it manifest So if you have the choice to assign yourself, yourself, your self-concept, who you are, if you have the choice to assign yourself little value or a lot of value, what would you choose? Obviously, well, not obviously, but I would hope you would choose to assign yourself a lot of value. I would hope that you are holding yourself to that higher standard because holding yourself to those higher standards is what makes you live an empowered life. And fulfilling life. You know, maybe someone can prove me wrong. Maybe you don't actually need to assign a lot of value to yourself to live an empowered and fulfilling life. Maybe you can choose to assign no meaning to you and try and live life that way. But you got you got to test, you got to experiment this for yourself. Personally, for me, when I've assigned very little value to myself, when I couldn't recognize my own value, I suffered a lot because I made other people, I made money, I made circumstances my god i put them on a pedestal i gave away my power to them and that made me feel really insignificant it made me feel really powerless and it made me suffer a lot so that's why i believe you need to put a lot of value on yourself in order to live a happier life in general but as i was saying you can prove me wrong if you can tell me that you can live happily by seeing yourself as someone that is limited and not valuable. I guess this is also what people mean when they say everything is within you because they are saying that you are the only one bestowed with the power to change your life by changing the way that you feel, by changing the way that you perceive yourself and things around you. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching and if you stay till the end without skipping, you are a real one. I love you and don't ever forget how damn powerful you are.